Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast. It's a podcast that does interviews with lovely ladies like my friend Jenny here on topics that help our listeners, that's you, find the research tools and support they need to be their very best, most inspired selves. So how are you today, Jenny? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited about this. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm excited too. I, I love, 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 love meeting new, wonderful, inspirational ladies. And gentlemen, we had a gentleman on months oh, ago, nice. but, but he was pretty fun too. He was a mystery writer, which is fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. So I actually know you through, we both went to, um, through the Health Coach Institute together, which is a fantastic, amazing program that helps coaches, uh, life, health, and probably any kind of coach could go through there, but basis starts with health and then it adds on. Um, I went through TCM and mastery as well. I'm not sure uh, where you went through, but you're also a local leader, which is a big deal, like helping organize the ladies around you. Um, and so anyone who takes on that baton to help lead a bunch of for, um, impact, wanting to make impact women together is, is a superstar in my book. Yeah, it's so good. And I love, I love ACI. And that's what I was um, talking to you about earlier. I just feel like it brings out such a neat um, way for us to all help people to transform their lives in their own way, but based on our experiences too. So everybody gets something different out of it. And that's why I love meeting people like you because it's like, oh my gosh, we are doing such totally different things, but did these things along the way that connect us. So cool stuff. Absolutely. It's great yeah. stuff. So I have, I, I'm a stalker. I tell everyone that, but um, <laughs> two things, I, well, I loved millions of things. You give, you have great giveaways on your site um, for anyone, jennybeecher.com. But uh, I love the description in your about section, which said a farm girl, a heart warrior, a wife and a mom. So could you tell us a little bit about like what that means to you? Like, I know what a mom is yeah. in a life, but um, I love the farm girl and heart warrior. Yeah, you know, I think it's always so difficult to try and describe who we are. And so it's, it's um, one of those things that I feel like is so, of course, personal. Um, and that's basically how my coaching journey has been to where I'm at, because I think that the story of my life has made me into the coach that I need to be today. Um, I obviously was not always a mother before I was a mother. A large part of my story is that I was free as a bird. I was a horse girl. I went to college and then I graduated in college and traveled around the country and um, with me and my dog. And we would just pick up jobs every three months working within the polo circuit, believe it or not. And it was so awesome. I was so free and I was young and I could eat whatever I wanted. I could do whatever I wanted. And so when I decided to, my husband and I, we dated for probably seven years off and on before I moved back here. And um, I decided to move back, get married. We had kids right away. And that is a total shift. Like you go from me and my dog and you know freedom and physically active all day and eat whatever I want to, you know, when you're pregnant, you lose your control of how your body shows up in the world. And I had no idea how to eat nutritiously. I was living off of Burger King and beer when I was in my 20s because I could and I had no idea differently. Um, and, and that was, you know, quite a hard time for me to walk through. And so three kids later, um, I really knew that something had to change. So now I feel just so lucky and blessed to have gone through the rocky times because I am really happy with the farm life here. We live in central Iowa. My kids are still young. They're eight, seven, and four, and they are the sweetest but most wild little people. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what life is. We just live this cool kind of outdoors life and life is good. Yeah. I love that. So you're one of my first uh, country folks because I live in Wisconsin and okay. no one else lives by us. Like everyone's in like San Diego, San Francisco, like, you know, all the sunny places where you yeah. know, there's sun and it's warm. Um, <laughs> so it's just <laughs> nice that someone else could, a little Midwested. Um, but I have a, my kiddo is almost the same ages as yours. I have Do four. You know? uh, I got to get them right now. Six eight, 10, and 14. 
and wow. my eight-year-old is uh, female are on the autism spectrum. So we oh, wow. are very busy family, yeah. not as active as we probably should be. Maybe we should be calling you later, but we're definitely, <laughs> my one son, my 10-year-old, I don't think his body knows how to stop moving. Like he flips, like flips all the time, like over like furniture, flip? oh, flips, wow. like back flips. <laughs> <laughs> He's just back flipping through the house. Amazing. Oh like, my okay, god. What yeah. are you doing, dude? He's like, oh, I'm flipping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. I don't know. It's crazy. That's incredible. It's crazy. I know. I don't know where they get that energy from. Sometimes I'm like, just I asked my mom, I'm like, did I have energy as a child? Because I certainly don't have any now. <laughs> She's like, I think I used it all up. Very active. Hmm, sure. I, I don't know about that. Awesome. So, oh, gosh. You said that, so did your journey kind of start in terms of um, body transformation? Was it post small yeah. humans or how did that unfold for you? It was sort of in the middle of it. Um, my first, I really thought that I was supposed to eat for two and I was struggling with a lot of self-doubt, insecurity, body image, my whole life. Like a lot of women do. I think we don't admit it or talk about it. Like we just think that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but I struggled with that. And so, yeah, I was quite a bit over 200 pounds with my first pregnancy, which I'm five, five and, you know, numbers are numbers, but that was like 75 pounds more than I was used to and did not come off with breastfeeding, like all the other people telling the will. And so I just kind of thought that's how I was supposed to be, but I was just uncomfortable. And so then I had, my kids are pretty close. And then I thought, well, I just must need to work out more. So then I started working out more, which led to me teaching fitness classes, which I loved. I've always been very drawn, as you see, to just helping people feel better. Um, but I still was doing it from the point of, I hate my body and I need to, um, I just need to stop eating the junk and work out hard. Like, what's wrong with me? And so after my last um, child, I just really had this epiphany. Actually, it came with, I tried really hard for two months and did this challenge at a gym because I thought the problem was that I just didn't look good. And that's why I was unhappy with myself, which I, I realized now the reason, especially as women and men do too, that we focus on our bodies is because there's something in here that's not, we're not listening to. We're not listening to our hearts. We're not um, listening to ourselves most of the time, but we put it on the external because we have no idea what this internal is. It's easy to look in the mirror and see the problem. And so that's what I thought would solve it. And it was two weeks of like this intense diet and these workouts. And I did, I looked great. Like I also went to zero family functions. I was like paranoid about what I was eating. I was so crabby and I thought, okay, is this what it takes to look good? And now I'm not any happier. And so that was when everything really shifted. And I thought, okay, I, I learned about health coaching and experienced that. And I thought, okay, we, this is, this is what it is. Um, it's not, it has nothing to do with me just, you know, not having the willpower to eat the nachos or whatever, or even that the nachos were the problem. It was why I was eating them. So that was where that big aha moment and shift was for me was when I realized, okay, this whole mentality that I have to suffer and beat myself up and try so hard to, um, look a little bit differently is not only warped, but it's a waste of my time and energy. And my family suffers because of it, because they're not getting the best of me. So really realizing how everything kind of ties together makes that lock so much easier to unlock. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I love that. Um, I have to say, I was so glad to hear you say, because you kind of experienced coaching. Um, I am a very non-traditional sort of person that would come into sort of the coaching arena. I was a software developer for 20 years. Wow. And, um, I create, uh, I'm currently divesting a current company that I'm owner, her owner of, but I made software for family caregivers with special needs children. But I tend to be a little left brainy, I'm very techy. And, um, but we went through a family challenge, right? When our daughter was diagnosed and then I was let go from my job uh, because I was pregnant with my fourth child, right? When I found out my third child was autistic and life sort of just like started punching me in the face over and over again. And it was mostly, I would say, because I wasn't listening. It, it, it wasn't about life at all. It was like things that needed to shift anyway, and I wasn't listening. So life kept trying to remind me about it. 
Um, and then I was able to, I went into coaching to help coach other special need moms that were, you know, needing some support um, through the app as part of that, that program we were offering. And all the shift was mine. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't expect what's going on. I don't need more help shifting. Everything's crazy. Um, but I think coaching done well is one of the most amazing impacts and gifts that we've been given that we can share with others in the world. And um, I love that it's so East West Coast or so up and, and into that how amazing it is. And I'm hoping to maybe light a fire under the Midwest so we can give yeah. that same it's it's a beautiful thing to be to have someone else hold space for you when you can't do it for yourself yet and yeah um and clearly i mean now you're out there holding space for all these other women who who are just fine they're beautiful and in, in the exact body yeah. they're in but yeah. um they're looking through fat colored glasses right and they just can't. exactly that's a good one yeah it's true and it's so hard um especially when it's people that you love um, to see them just so hard on themselves. And I think coaching is so neat because it also helps me to handle relationships in my life a little bit differently to understand the, that we all have these different lenses. And so it's interesting um, how you were saying that, you know, experiencing the coaching and how it just um, shifts you as well, because I had all of those things um, happen for me. And I feel like every time I'm with a client, there's something new for me as well and so that's what I really love about coaching and that I think people are just starting to figure out is that it's very much um like you said holding that space I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do I'm I am not an expert in your life but you are and we're going to get you to realize that and make it so that you don't have to you know rely on google searches how to know if the keto diet is right for me you know, yeah, so, I know right <laughs> but I think it's that um, and I think a lot of times for me in my situation, it was like, now I'm a mom, like, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't think anybody really comes in just all flowers and roses, but it did, like you said, it's just overwhelming and things, the more you feel overwhelmed, the more life overwhelms you. And what do we do? I think a lot of us take it out on ourselves. I must be doing something wrong. I must be not enough. I'm not trying hard enough. I'm not doing the right things and look at this girl or look at her, or look at him. And it can be, I mean, it's debilitating. But then we put a smile on our face and walk outside. That's great. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know? And it's so to have that, coaching, that kid's chicken nugget though. I know. Right? I know. That's the hardest thing I think as a mom. I'm like, how many nuggets have I eaten in my life that I have not ordered? That, right. that would be an interesting statistic to know. And they're not even that good, but you know, every mom, chicken nuggets happening. Um, one thing I think that you had just described, I was wondering if you would have worded it this way, if, if I was accurate in my thought. I, mm -hmm. I feel like what coaching gives you the ability to do is um, actually co-create change in yourself and others. And I think coaches forget sometimes that every opportunity that we have to hold space for someone else, whether they like, they're holding space for us too right? They're holding yeah. us capable of being a coach. They're holding us capable of being able to transform their life. And it's such a, it's so empowering to be able to co-create change in who you are as a, a person and how you're showing up in the world. Um, it's a very beautiful thing to see. Sometimes. Yeah. I, know. I know it can be so difficult, like to feel some of the things sometimes, but it's so good like you said, I love the word co-creating because I think that's, that's exactly, it's nobody saying you need to be my idea of healthy or you need to be my idea of fit or happy or anything. And I think to me, the solution to most of the world's problems, not really, but in a big way, if we could all just realize that we're all going to see things and experience things differently, you and I can go to the same movie and come out with completely different, um, you know, ideas. Well, for example, as we're recording this, yesterday was the Super Bowl, and there's a lot of hullabaloo about the halftime show. 
everybody saw the same thing, but everybody's got a different idea. And I think instead of like attacking each other every time we disagree because we feel more right, if we can look in and, and learn to have those tools um, to where we're like, okay, why is this feeling weird to me that this person said this? And look at ourselves instead of projecting it onto others. It just is such a freedom. And to see people learn that, um, starting with and why I why I am a health coach is because I think the women that I work with are usually very overwhelmed mothers and if you can't food is food is the what's under the magnifying glass and so they're not necessarily at a point where it's like okay let's talk about relationships it's like I just want to lose 20 pounds okay let's talk about you know how you got here and let's talk about you and how you are um you know how your life is what do you love about it and usually, women are like, oh, I don't know. Nobody has, I don't it's, know. it's so bad. <laughs> I don't have time to tell you what I love. You know, I'm so busy. And so that adds to that, you know, sort of like knee-jerk reaction that we have when something happens in the world. Or like, um, I don't know if in Wisconsin, the political atmosphere is as lovely as it is here in Iowa. <laughs> um, but it can be really painful for you if you are not, um, in the right if you camp. don't know yeah you know like if you just don't know what you even want or believe and you're kind of listening to everything that's where i think um the coaching really just starts to kind of like okay like i know how to listen to myself i actually know what i want in this situation and it starts with food sleep <laughs> where we spend our time so mm -hmm. it all ties together Absolutely. and yeah so i say um i think it's ever talk about like when you were younger like the mean girls club and mm -hmm. i was like we don't need a mean girls club we just look in the mirror we're like we're meaner to ourselves than anybody ever could be right so, so uh, true. but one of the i think it, an H, I, I want i'm going to credit hci and i'm pretty sure it was them but one of the things that stuck with me through all of the trainings and all of my clients um and i thought i was doing it mm -hmm. but maybe not always was trying to actually have conversations with people through the lens of curiosity versus judgment mm -hmm. and sometimes when we can just look at others with unbridled curiosity without having to be right I, that's why i love coaching i'm not telling you anything that you don't know i'm not telling you anything i'm asking you to get in touch with your own amazing yeah. wisdom and like and you had said it like the way that it changes relationships i tear up randomly on these calls so just so you know but um, my daughter is a teenager Ugh, not looking i was not looking forward to it and i wasn't i'm still not but we're in the car one day and she looks over to me and she said can i tell you a secret and i was like i now i totally want to know right yeah. but i but i did say i said but I, whatever you tell me, if your dad asks me directly, I will not lie. And she said, okay. But I got to have this like a wonderful moment with my daughter. And it was because of the 15 moments before that, where she told me things that she thought I was going to think of her in a different way. And I said, well, well, tell me more about that. And that allowed me to be able to be someone that could be told a secret, you know? So having this ability to see everything with a state of curious like fine you don't like the political candidate you don't like that someone voted for someone i won't i wouldn't say who i don't like at all <laughs> so what if you go well why did you vote for them i'm curious and mean it <laughs> yeah you just didn't see some one single solitary weird point in some bill 500 billion years ago that like made special needs funding available through able and now they can feed their family yeah okay yeah. wow that means a lot to them i can see how yeah. you feel that way now so yeah. i think that's what coaching why i think coaching is amazing yeah i love that you said that especially about that beautiful moment with your daughter because i think especially as parents we really feel like maybe not all of it but i feel like it's easy to step in that space of i need to have a, an opinion i need to have a direction i need to be um helpful in the best way and so a lot of times that comes in like oh, I just need to say something amazing or give some amazing advice or which usually means like having some kind of an opinion. But when you can just say, wow, 
tell me more about that, you know, and even like you're saying, my kids are still young. And when my daughter, I have a boy, girl, boy, and my daughter, she has the emotions. I mean, she got enough for everybody in the family. And it, I mean, it's something small that she will go running upstairs and just slam the door and she's crying. Oh, okay. Tell me about that. Instead of, I mean, I try And sometimes it's not, I'm not like the world's best mom nailing it every time. But when I'm really like able to totally release my, you know, frustration that, you know, I was on a phone call or the kids were doing something else. There's not, you know, when I can release all of that and just say, okay, Bristol, tell me what you're feeling right now. It's amazing. This shift. And I have to have that energy from it. It's not just what you say, like you're saying, you know, it's like, really yeah, you gotta be ready. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing to see their little bodies even be like, Oh, you are like, we're together now. Like we're not just in the same room, but we're together. And it's like, it does. But I wouldn't have ever known that if I hadn't, you know, discovered no, it. experienced it. Right. My, one mm -hmm. of my favorite ones is my 10 year old son. The one that does backflips all the time. Oh, okay. We're in the, uh, chatting one night and he comes up and he's laying in the bed and he said something and I was like, Oh yeah, tell me more. And he like looked at me like just shocked. Mm -hmm. Like you really want to know? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And now he comes up every night before bed and he crawls in and he's like, do you want to know about my day? I'm like, yeah. What do we got? Right. Oh, this is so cool. And I was like, man, like now I'm, I thought I was being a good mom when I was like working all the time and not like doing for them all the time and in all these clubs and showing up all this stuff. And my kid just wanted to curl in bed and tell me about his day, you know? Yeah. So, but I had to let myself off the hook. Yes. Being the perfect mom and looking good and being smart and yes. not interrupting the phone calls and all of that stuff. Yes, exactly. And it's, it's so, um, we get so future focused too. And, where it's like, I'm doing this for you, you know, we've yeah. got to pay for your college or <laughs> something, you know? And yeah. so it's, but it's amazing how, when we can just be in the moment and be present. And I think that's something that is so powerful, even just when we're alone to really be present. The other day, last week was just a week where, and I don't know if it's like the time of year. And like you said, we live in the Midwest where it's not sunny. I don't think we've seen it's the sun so for like a week. <laughs> and so it, it just makes your energy down sometimes. And I thought, okay, I got my Starbucks iced coffee because that's, you know, life sometimes. And I just sat there in the parking lot. I didn't listen to music or anything. And I was just present in the moment around me. There's a woman next to me with getting her kid a cake pop. Oh, cute. Like, look at, she's, you know, looks like she's in a hurry. And here's a man crossing the street. And isn't it funny how he's carrying his hands in his pockets? And it was just such a gift to be in life in that moment. And it was the energy that I got from that instead of being like, I gotta go, I gotta go to the grocery store. Oh, red light, like, oh, oh, me, 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 I, I, I. There's so much going on around us. And when we give ourselves the gift of just noticing that, you know, I think. Yeah. I, think I love that you that. said that. My, my husband thinks I'm bananas because um, I'm a talker. Like, I like my own words. I can't lie. But um, I don't listen to the radio in the car ever, yeah. ever. Like, long trip, months, like, 10 hour trips. I don't listen. Wow. What do you do? I'm like, what do you mean? What do you do? Drive. He's like, that's it. I'm like, no, think, drive, <laughs> look at stuff. Think trees are pretty. He's like, trees aren't pretty. Yes, they are. What do you think? It's just completely <laughs> bewildered with this idea that people can be in silence. I'm like, we have four kids. I just want nothing to happen for a little while. <laughs> I'm going to go take a random drive for no reason. I know. It's nice. Yeah, that's amazing, though. I can go a little bit, but then I'm like, I need some, like, mood music or something, but that's, you know, you are, like, the most undistracted driver on the road. I feel like you I am, but, you know, like, totally not related to the podcast at all, but, like, the second, two weeks before Christmas, my, I don't even listen to the radio, and I'm super undistracted, and I've never had a tick in my life. A man hit my, ran into my car, like a human, not a car. Oh. My car, running, because he you know, something came up for him, I guess. And then he fell under my car and I ran over a man with my car. What? And I literally oh thought, thank heavens that I am like so ridiculously undistracted. Like no radio, no phone. I was stopped at a red light. I just started to turn. I was going like a mile an hour. I'm sure he's 
probably now fine. Wow. But um, so I was like, don't give me any business about whether or not I drive with my radio on or not. I think yeah. I'll- save that man's life. I was like, what would happen? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm still, I'm still oh, traumatized, my. but so why are you thinking about that? I know it was so bad. It was so awful. Yeah. Um, but oh, on a lighter note, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I love that thing. I'm so glad we got to talk a lot about coaching and like yeah. how overwhelmed mom would definitely be. So moms out there, if you're overwhelmed yeah. and you're ready to like, um, um, take back how you feel about your body and make a decision about it instead of just living in it. I think that Jenny be great for you to connect with. And we're actually running close to finishing up on time. So how about you tell us a little bit, do you have any offers that are going on right now or anything that you can give to the audience to let them know how to reach out to you for? Yeah, so definitely um, connect with me. I love to connect with people on social media. I think it's so great when you can actually talk to people. Um, I'm just, the Jenny Beecher on Facebook and then Jenny.Beecher on Instagram. So I'm always on those two. And then pop over to JennyBeecher.com because I do have a great free help in the tab. It says free help. And there's just a ton of, if you're looking for a quick start on, you know, cutting back the sugar or getting better energy, uh, things like that. There's a whole list of them there uh, free to grab. And then if you want to connect with me and really talk personally, which is where the mic at, because you are going to feel so good. Um, I do a free, the first phone call is complimentary always because I just want people to know me and trust me. It's a very personal thing. And you can definitely connect with me over there at JennyBeecher.com. Um, but I'm and just excited to connect with moms. J-E-N-N-Y. Mm-hmm. B-E-E-C-H-E-R. Two E's. Uh, dot yeah. com. Because my, yeah. my mom's name is Jenny, but it's actually oh. Genevieve. Oh. And it's spelled with a G. So I'm always like, hmm. Jenny Howe. Yeah. It's really cool. It's G-E-N-E-V-I-E-V-E. You have to say it faster. You get lost. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that was, that was good how you said that. But yeah, that's cool. Jenny's are good people. (laughs) Yeah. Jenny's are the best. So JennyBeecher.com. And I will vouch for, I actually went to your site um, before some of the changes that are coming around. So I'm a little early bird, but there's this really, can you tell us a tiny bit about the rainbow energy? Oh, the energy rainbow is really fun. Okay. So that's um, available on that page I just told everybody about. And it's basically, you can print one off for every week, but it's seven days and there are different six different categories that you can make small shifts in your life. That's going to increase your energy. Um, nothing big. It's not like you're just making a huge declaration, but you're going to color in each day on that energy rainbow, get your markers out. Kids love to help with this one. My kids are like, mom, you didn't do any purple this week, um, to help you. And then at the end of the week, more colorful, your rainbow, you will know that, you know, you're inching towards feeling you know, that energy every day. It's really fun. It's easy. What a fun activity. Like, you know, like adding a little bit of the mom vibe with little humans and yeah. they can come together with you. That's so nice. I have a seven year old daughter right now who is rainbow obsessed. So I'm like, well, you want accountability. You put that in front of your daughter and you say, you can't color this until mommy takes time to sleep is one of those things. <laughs> like, Go to oh, bed, yeah. mom. I want to color that tomorrow. You know, He's going to remind you that every day there, just in case you're looking for, I okay so although I did buy it to my 14 year old not to my seven year old um there's the cutest you've ever seen rainbow um was it a plus it's like a plushy unicorn with wings and a rainbow horn at Hobby Lobby but it's like made out of that stress ball stuff oh cool it is the 14 year old started crying on her birthday at the end of the month because we got her a unicorn like, oh. so apparently it's the jam right now. So if you're looking for a gift for the little one. That's amazing. Was, and that gives me hope that she's 14 and still likes that stuff. I'm like, oh, oh she I does. Really she's an interest. She, she wears like flannel shirts and likes unicorns, you know, whatever. Yeah. Go with it. Perfect. All right. So JennyBeecher.com. Right. You have a, a do you, are you relaunching? I think coming up in some time. Yeah, soon, yeah totally in done. the spring. So we just closed the doors um, a couple weeks ago on the total body transformation, which is basically um, a group, uh, the group version of the private coaching that I do. But it's really fun because you get that community atmosphere. Um, but we're going to relaunch that in the spring. So that is something to definitely keep your eyes peeled for if you're a group uh, type of person. That's really fun. So hopefully you'll let us know so we can let all of our podcast audience um, let you know when you're opening your program back up. Is that hopefully? Yes. 
All right. Well, thank you so very much. I'm so pleased and so blessed that you took the time to be on the podcast with us today. And we'll, um, we can't wait to share this with the audience. Would you like to say any yeah. words before thank, No, I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me on. And to everybody listening, I know it's, um, it, it can be isolating if you're a mom and it's hard to kind of be in your own head and your own heart, but I just want you all to know that you are not alone and you are enough and you are loved. So don't forget that today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.